Hello everybody, welcome to the Martial Arts of Sale. This is the opening monologue on three powerful steps to closing more one call closes, whether it's on social media or Better Business Bureau or LinkedIn, it doesn't matter. The process is the same. Now, before we dig into the topic, here's a question that I've been asked by business associates, friends, partners, clients, and you know, digital marketing companies, small business owners, entrepreneurs, they're all talking about and asking, is cold calling still effective today due to technology? And my answer is very simple. If you're doing it, yes. If you're not doing it, then obviously no. It's that simple. For me personally, because of technology, and I talk about it a lot, there are more opportunities to co-call business to customers or business to business than any time in history. You just have to want to do it. And if you want to do it, you're gonna learn how to do it. And you're gonna see a difference. And here's why I say that, and I got my cheat sheet notes today. Because of today's technology, you know, a lot of businesses, small, medium, whatever the size, they get confused on what's the best platform for their business, or what's the best application, or what's the best process. And so they get sold different things. You know, they get ads on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, etc. All of those things are good. You just have to understand, does it mix with your business model? So one of the things that I've learned when I was first getting into social media, I didn't know anything about that. But one thing I did know is I know how to cold call. That was my saving thing. Because when all else fails, I could afford to make mistakes and learn, but I still cold call. Does that make sense? So it's a personal thing. I don't think it'll ever go away because the more technology there is, the more access you have to leads. Does that make sense? Now, whether you're a small business owner, a multi-billion dollar conglomerate, a startup company, a salesperson, entrepreneur, it doesn't matter. There are two things that we have in common and that we focus on. What is that? Qualified leads and sales, right? I'm sure some of you have bought, you know, dealt with lead brokers and you bought leads and those leads were crap, right? Or you tried different applications, different platforms, and they sold you the farm, but there was nothing in the farm, right? So you feel, you, you, you pissed off about it. Good old cold calling could have saved the day. Because even when you get those leads, you still got to call them, right? I get companies, when I was in Vegas building call center, that companies hire me to sell their products or set up appointments for them. Because cold call does work. Now, due to the millennial mindset, they don't like talking on the phone. But I, I found a way to get through that. Because everyone wants attention. Now, direct messaging is important. Text messaging, you know, webinars, all these technology, they're all good. You just have to know how to use them. At the end of the day, you still have to go through the sales process. You still have to, you know, get that person to do a webinar with you or go face-to-face -face if you're on a, on a video camera, whatever the case may be. If I don't know how to do those things, I do know how to cold call. Those things are just added weapons for me. Does that make sense? So remember that, sales. Now, what we're gonna to discuss today is how to use three powerful steps to do one call closes. Now, it's not gonna work in the beginning because you gotta keep doing it, but it's like anything else. When you keep applying and you're doing it, it becomes you. Does that make sense? Now, here's what I want you to know if you haven't thought about this already. This is Paul Cruz mindset. Selling and closing is all about rhythm and tempo. It's storytelling. It's about emotions and logic. That's what it is. Why? Because people buy one or two ways. They either need something or they want it. And I did a video on that. Why, why do people buy and how do they buy? And what salespeople need in them so that they can trigger those emotions. So these three steps is basically the follow-up of those two. So if you get them emotional and you understand the emotions you need to get them emotional, then step this is what these three steps are gonna be able to do. And also remember this, it's not about telling a story or just telling a story. It's about how you tell the story, 
how you make people feel, how you paint the picture. Does that make sense? Because your words create an emotion, creates a picture. Does that make sense? So I want you to write this down. Tell, it's not about telling a story. It's about how you tell the story. Keep that in mind. Now, before we dig into the topic, if you're watching this on YouTube for the first time, hit the subscription button below. Give me a thumbs up, a like. It helps the algorithm. And if you believe this video can help others, do me a favor. Not only share your comments, but also share the video with others. Now, for the introduction. steps to doing more one call closes welcome to the martial arts and sales my name is Paul Cruz I have my soda here I'm gonna take a little swig before we start thank you for that now I'm gonna ask something of you guys I'm gonna want you to write some of these notes down and it's important because I wanted to make it you I want you to remember this because if you apply these techniques on a daily basis, I promise you this. If you're number 10 out of 10 people in your sales team, within 45 to 60 days, you'll be in the top two. You have to want to do this. It will change the way you sell. It will change your business volume. Whether you're a small business owner, entrepreneur, salesperson, telemarketer, established business, the fundamentals of sales do not change. And as I mentioned in the opening monologue, write this down. It's not about telling a story. It's about how you tell a story. You can have 10 movie producers produce the same type of movie, but the one that tells the story better is the one that's gonna be successful. It's just that cut and dry. And what's the start of that? Cold calling. Now, this is not about cold calling, but everything ties into cold calling. You see what I'm saying? With technology, there's a lot of different apps. There's a lot of things with social media. But I'm going to keep it on these three steps because these three steps apply to whether you're calling the Better Business Bureau lead, whether you're calling leads on Google, whether you're calling your buy leads from Dun & Bradstreet. It doesn't matter. Social media, it all applies. Cold calling is not dead. And I'm going to show you how and why it's not there within these three steps. Now, step number one, I want you to write this down. The opening of the call. Here's the most critical factor of the opening of the call. From the minute you say hello, or you do a text message or a direct message or um, email, whatever the case may be, you have to handle and anticipate objections and don't take it as a rejection. You have to know you're gonna get that. I'm gonna give you an example because there's about five steps within the opening of the call that you need to understand and apply. I'm gonna give an example of when I'm selling websites or social media. First of all, when I cold call these people, I have an idea what industry they're in, what kind of revenues they have, I do a little research on them before I call them. Okay, I'm always prepared. So the first thing I do know is that one, they're gonna be pissed off, most of them, because they don't like to be interrupted or they might have gotten another phone call that wasted their time, etc. So you gotta be prepared for that. So I've been using this strategy and this technique for 30 years and it works every single time. The first thing you need to know is you need to understand, one, that they get a lot of these calls and that they're busy. And that they don't want to deal with you. Period. Right? So, one of the things I do is I say, listen, this is Paul Cruz with Martial Arts of Sales or the Paul Cruz Show, depending on which company I'm using, is 
I'll be brief and to the point, I know that you're busy. That ends a lot of it. If they object at that point, which I sometimes anticipate them to object, I say, let me ask you a question. And you don't let them answer. It's a statement question. I understand you get a lot of these calls, right? Yes, and they'll probably let it all out. And when they do, they just let it all out. Now they're more relaxed. Your response to that is, I understand and respect that. But you got to say it sincere. You got to say it like you really do mean it. And I do mean it. I know how they're feeling. I get those calls too. I understand that they might be in a bad mood because I might have gotten through the secretary or they might have been busy and they happened to take the call because they thought it was somebody else. Whatever the case may be, I, I, I always use that. Like clockwork. Like getting up and brushing my teeth. Don't forget it. It just, you have to do that. Okay? Keep that in mind. Okay? Now, number one thing is, this is what you have to understand. The number one thing is, you have to be excited from the get-go. I'm excited from the get-go. Mr. Klein, listen, you get a lot of these calls, I understand and respect that. But let me ask you this question. If I could show you a way. You got, it's instantaneous. You got three to five seconds to keep them engaged. And what's going to get people engaged? Not BS, but excitement. Period. You, me, whatever. We get excited before we take any action, right? That's the beginning of it. So, number one, and, the, and then when you're excited, how you excited is going to determine the perceived value you have. That's why if you do not address that, I'll be brief and to the point, I know that you're busy. Well, let me ask you a question. Do you get a lot of these calls? You may not believe that. That may sound corny and cliche, but it works, and your perception or your, your perceived value is solid. Because remember, we all have perceived value from the beginning, especially if you call call. Now, when you're calling on social media and there's people that you're following, they might know who you are a little bit more. It's, you still have to do it because you never know if they're using bots, right? That, that happened to me. But you still, you still want to keep the process the same. Never take it for granted. But you got to perceive value. Write that down. Perceive value and in parentheses, put excitement. Number two is you must earn trust within the first three to five seconds. And the way I've earned trust is I said those two things on the rebuttals. I'll be brief and to the point. I know that you're busy. Let me ask you a question. Do you get a lot of these calls? I understand and respect that. That's on my stockbroker's day and it applies today. It's an incredible, credible tool. But you got to earn trust within the first three to five seconds. Remember, you're about to go for one call close. Like a one night stand. Okay? Number three. Write this down. It sets the tone. You, me, as a salesperson, we set the tone for how the sale is going to go. Because when you're making the phone call, you should have the advantage, right? You may make 100, 200 calls a day. They may receive 10 calls a day. So who should be better at the phone? You or them? You, right? So you're going to set the tone. How the relationship is going to start or how the, the sales process is going to go. It's your job to set the tone. You have to earn their business, right? Does that make sense? So keep that in mind. Number three is set the tone. Number four, when you, when, you, when you get excited, you earn the trust in three to five seconds, and you set the tone, basically you start breaking down barriers. It's like, for example, you're all pissed off, you're all mad, and you got a serious face, and someone makes you laugh. Can you really get upset after that? No. I did this, I'll tell you a story, when young, you know, maybe I was 20, 21 years old, maybe late, later than that, a friend of mine, I was at a club with them and his girlfriend, and they were getting into an argument, a fight, and I don't like to see that. So I said, how do I stop this? There's people watching. 
So I put on my sales cap, and I wasn't in sales at the time. I was a runner and things like that. So I told my friend, I say, listen, you know, you're not gonna believe what happened to me. I'm gonna give you three guesses, and if you guess wrong, I'm gonna punch you in the face. True story. And they knew I would. Well, he knew I would. So he guessed twice, and he goes, I, I told him, hey, if you guess wrong, I'm telling. He was like, oh, I can't, you know, believe. So he guessed wrong, and I said no. I got up this morning, I was brushing my teeth, I looked in the mirror, <coughs> excuse me, I got so good looking. The way I said it, it was hilarious. They were dying laughing. I was laughing. After I had it, before I had a serious face. <coughs> and they started laughing. And they couldn't fight again. They started talking. Does, does that make sense? So when you break that barrier, He's pissed off or she's pissed off. You interrupted, you didn't. All of a sudden now they engage with you, right? You broke down the barrier. And then number five is very important before you go into part two. It's very important once you break down the barrier and you set the tone and they give you the basically permission to pitch them, you, it's important that you start to qualify them, what I call discovery questions. You have to ask them questions about their business. You got to get them engaged, involved. You, have, you, have, you must do that. Because when you qualify them and you ask questions, now you're going to know how, st what story you need to tell them, what they really want to hear, or what they need to hear, both need and want to hear, based on the facts that they've given you. I always do that. Does that make sense? Okay, now let's go to number two. Number two is the body of the call. And basically, it's the storytelling. Okay, number one, and, and step number two is what I call intrinsic value. How do you get intrinsic value? Now you've earned perceived value, so now you're allowed to go into the body. Now you gotta tell a story. Now this is where you earn your pay, or you get to really close the deal. You gotta be enthusiastic at this at this part. You have to tell a phenomenal story. You gotta mix that with logic. So number one is you wanna make sure you, you solidify and you increase your value in the body of the call, okay? Number two is the storytelling. I keep saying storytelling. Whoever says they don't want to hear story, they lie to themselves. We all hear stories every single day. We all tell stories every day. We're all salespeople. We all need and we all want. That's how we buy. There's nothing different about it. Difference is, I know it. Do you know it? If you don't, now you do. Storytelling, there's a lot to storytelling. You already started it from the opening. But when you get into the body, it's like going into the movie. You're in the middle of the movie. And if you're not engaged and emotionally involved, you're gonna walk out of the movie theater, right? If you don't get them engaged and keep them engaged and involved in the conversation through your storytelling, the oohs, the ahs, you know, the rhythm and tempo, they will hang up on you. Or they'll go through the process, through the motions, and you won't ever hear from them again. Very important. Number two, storytelling. Number three is you start to transition to the close. Now, in this in this part, it really starts to, you start to figure out based on the questions they answer, how they answer, you start to push the close. You start to test them if they're ready to buy. You push. I push all the time. If you believe that a customer needs your product or services that could truly, really help them and that they need to own it, you got to get them to want to own it. Then the only way you can do that is you have to push. All the top salespeople do that. They know when and how to do it. Number four is when you do that, when you push, you, 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 you'll be surprised how much credibility you earn. You lay down a strong foundation. Number one is you set the tone. In this part, you lay down the foundation. How you guys are going to do business. 
Because every customer wants a strong individual on the other end of the phone. They do. They wonder how I could trust this person. This person's gonna be honest with me. This person is gonna be there. And let me tell you something, every customer to me, whether I got one or a thousand or a hundred, every customer, every customer to me is like my first customer. I would treat them like royalty as best that I can. That's laying my foundation. So write that down. Number four, lay the foundation, a strong foundation. Number five in that is a box close. A box close to me is this. You could apply these, this close to anything you're selling. And I want you to think about these questions I'm going to mention now. Mr. Client, do you like the idea? Yeah, okay. Does the idea I presented to you or the opportunity, whatever the case may be, make sense? Yes, makes sense, okay. Do you truly see the value in how this product, this service, is gonna help your business grow and generate you more sales? Yes. Great. Now, before we get into step three, keep in mind in step one, you did the discovery question. Now step three is where that comes to effect. Okay, so step number three, write this down. Close, convert. Close, convert. This is where you actually develop true value. To me, closing happens from the hello. Because you can't get here unless you get through the opening, right? So true value. You also, number two, you, you developed and created a win-win-win relationship. Now, I'm sure most of you have heard of win-win-win-win. Typically, that doesn't happen. Two of the three win, or one of the three win. If you do this right, you can honestly say win-win-win relationship. What are the three wins? Number one, the customer wins. You converted him from a prospect to a customer. Number two, the company wins. And number three, the salesperson wins. Now, if you're the owner of the company, you're the salesperson, then you win twice. Why? Because you solved the problem, you got them great leads and sales, or you're gonna get them some lead and sales. And that's what everyone's looking for. When the smoke clears, all the social media, all that, it's about leads and sales. That's it. When I first got into social media, I focused more on conversion. That's what I was doing while I'm learning the other stuff. That's an advantage, right? Some people can't afford to make those mistakes. Because then they get discouraged and they have a bad taste about social media and things like that, right? So think about that. Number, uh, number three is you get the order. You ask them for the order. How do you want to pay for this? How do you want to secure it? How do you want to own this? Visa, MasterCard, Discover. You want to do a Zelle? Zelle means um, you just got to give them the, your email address and it goes bank to bank. Wire transfer, whatever the case may be. You get the order. You've earned it. And then number four is the prospects. Is now a customer. They take ownership. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Now I'm going to give you a bonus rebuttal. Let's say you, you're going for the order and they decide, no, I need to think about it. You get everything right. And when you ask for the order or get the order, they resist a little bit. That could be an honest thing, you know, it could be a sincere thing, but you got to still push. So my, my rebuttal is this, Mr. Klein. You told me you like the idea, right? Yeah, you told me it makes sense, right? You said that you see the value, how this is gonna help your business. And you also mentioned to me, this is when part one, when the discovery question, you mentioned to me that if you if you could if you know you can make X amount of dollars and you have 100 percent control of it, you're willing to invest X amount of dollars, and that, that X amount of dollars is in the bank, it's liquid, right? So what's holding you back? Then I follow up with this. What is holding you back? 
Then I follow with another question. I'm not asking you to do or make any decision that you don't make all the time. That's power clause. And if you say it right, remember, now what you say is how you say it. I would say 60% of them give them right there. That makes sense? So those are the three powerful steps to doing one call closes. If you apply these techniques on a daily basis, I promise you within 45 days, you'll see a, 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 an improvement in your sales. If you're having problems with it and you're trying it, you could message me directly uh, you know, on my YouTube channel. You can also direct message me on my Facebook page at Martial Arts of Sales. You can do that as well. I truly hope this has been helpful. I want to thank you for being part of the Martial Arts of Sales and sharing your time with me. Till we speak again, I say goodbye. This is Paul Cruz with the Martial Arts of Sales. Have a fantastic day. Bye for now.